this is another lecture for chapter one and this is on the direction field sometimes called the slope field the direction field consists of the for these uh, first order equations it's the yt plane and it consists of these little elements. Sometimes they have arrowheads on them, sometimes they don't. But the slope of the little element is the same as the slope of the solution through there. In other words, it is the first derivative. So if the first derivative here is 3.8, which it is, then the slope of this little arrow is 3.8. Just the slope of it. They keep the links all the same so they don't overlap each other on the plot. They're just little tiny representations of the slope right there here. The slope of the um, the value of dy by dt, the value of the derivative from the differential equation is 0 0.77, therefore the slope of the arrow is 0 0.77. And similar over here, it's minus 9.1. And you see if you ran the solution curve through there, that the um, these elements are tangent to the solution curve at these different points. Of course, people like to make analogies about these um, curve. I like the one about the stream. So the little arrows give the current in the stream, or current in the river, and you take a stick and you put it in here, and then the curve, the stick is going to move along following the current in the river, and the path that it traces out is a solution path. Obviously, making a direction field is a very complicated process because you have to put many of these little elements all over the plane. So there are computer programs to do this. However, the computer programs don't always do such a good job. And if you don't know what to look for, you can miss it. So we're going to look at a couple things here that you need to pick out in a direction field and even if you see one that's been generated by a computer, you might see some very important lines are missing, but because you know about them, you'll know to look for them. So here's some basic vocabulary. This isn't really emphasized in the text. Um, maybe they think it's old-fashioned, but I think it's important. And they do use these terms in future chapters, but we can use them here. And um, the terms are isocline, and nullcline. Iso, of course, means same. So what an isocline is, is a line or curve in the plane along which the first derivative is the same. So dy by dt, which is some function of y and t, could be, say, equal to 2. There's an isocline associated with the value 2. There's an isocline associated with the value 1, or negative 1. But if you put c equal to 0, that isocline is called a nullcline. Null meaning 0. So isoclines are lines or curves in the plane along which the first derivative is the same. All right. But if that derivative happens to be 0, the isocline is also called a nullcline. In the previous chapters, on uh, her lectures on um, various methods of solution, we made quite a distinction between homogeneous and non-homogeneous. For these direction fields, the big difference is between an autonomous differential equation and a non-autonomous one. There's a question also of linearity in it, but we're looking at autonomous versus non-autonomous right now. If you recall, an autonomous differential equation is one for which there is no explicit t dependence. So, for example, if we had dy by dt equals t squared plus y, that's non-autonomous because the t is sitting here by itself. So an autonomous one will not have a t dependence. It will just have y and some constants in the in the uh, this function f. So the function f is a function only of y and not of t. In this case, the isoclines are all horizontal lines. 
Now, if there is no y dependence, then the acyclic lines are all vertical lines. And if it's non autonomous, they can be all kinds of curves in the plane, and that's a much more complicated situation. So we'll, we discuss these autonomous situations first and the non autonomous second. First, let's take a look at why, for the autonomous situation, the isoclines are all, all horizontal lines. Okay, so here's the yt plane, and the derivative has no t dependence. So let's find the, um, shall we say, uh, we'll just start at t equals zero and find the point where, so this will be a point in y, where the first derivative is, say, equal to uh, positive 1. Well, let's say it's right here at this value of y. Well, because there's no t dependence at this value of y, it's also 1. At this value of y, it's also 1. Uh, at this value of y, it's also 1, and same over here. So if you drew a line through these, that would be your isocline for c equal 1, I uh, didn't quite draw the line through there very well. C equal 1, you see it's a horizontal line. If you wanted the line where C equals 0, your null line, let's say your null line was when, occurred when Y equals 0, okay, so it doesn't matter what the value of T is, as long as Y is 0, the slope is going to be 0. So the null line, just like all the other isoclines, is a horizontal line, and that's for autonomous differential equations, no t dependence. If you had y dy by dt equals some function of time, you would get a rotation in that idea, so there's no change with y. So, let's say if you wanted to know the value We'll start with y equals 0, and we'll find the value of t such that this function equals some constant c, say 2. Say it happens here at t equal 2, or t equals 1, the slope is 2. So you get a slope that's kind of steep like this. It doesn't matter where you are in y, you're going to have the same slope, and that's why that isocline is vertical. If it's 0, say it's 0 when t is minus 1. Well, then you can just keep moving in y, either direction, and as long as t stays, stays at minus 1, then you will um, have the same slope. So now your isoclines are vertical lines. And for the non-autonomous, of course, there's no, we can't even make any generalizations like this. Okay, now here's a big point that's important. Now for the null clines, that's the locations where um, the slope is 0, so the slope equals some function, um, I'm sorry, some function of t and y in general, where that equals 0 is the null line. We have some continuity here, and by continuity of the, of the function, I shouldn't set up the differential equation, continuity of the of the solution y of t, then the null clines divide the x at the yt plane into regions of equal flow. And here's what that means. Okay, let's say that this is one null cline and this is another null cline. So right along this line, it's a null line, dy by dt equals 0. And here's another one, dy by dt equals 0. Okay. Now let's start the solution here, and its derivative is not equal to 0, right? Okay, let's say it's increasing. So if it's increasing, then how can it turn around and be decreasing if it's continuous unless it goes through a point where the slope is zero. But that only occurs on this null line or on this null line. So if it started off here as positive, it can never be negative anywhere in this region between these null clines. Similarly, it happens down here. Say 
here the slope is negative. Okay, well, the solution curve is going in this direction. It can't turn around and go back up here and have a positive slope unless it goes to a point where it's zero because it's a continuous function. It has to go, it can't just jump to the other slope. But that can't happen because all these are the only places, these two null lines are the places where that derivative is zero, so you won't have a derivative of zero out here. As a result, if the slope is negative at this point, it's negative everywhere. It might not be the same amount of negative, but it's all going to be negative. If the slopes are positive here, they're going to be positive. And same up here. I say they're negative up here. All the slopes up here are going to be negative. They might approach this equilibrium, which they're going to do either in what was called forward time or backward time, but they'll do it asymptotically. So the slopes will always be negative. And here the slopes will always be positive, even though they're approaching zero. For this autonomous differential equation, there's another important feature of these null clines. The null clines are solutions of the differential equation. In fact, they are the equilibrium solutions of the differential equations. Okay, now if you recall from um, the uniqueness theorem, so it's satisfied, uniqueness is satisfied, a solution curve cannot cross another solution curve. So no solution curves cross these null clines for autonomous differential equations. So let's do an example. So here's the differential equation and it's autonomous. There is no t dependence. Okay, so I want to find the null clines, which I say are going to be my equilibrium solution. So I set dy by dt equal to zero, so that's y minus y squared equals zero, and I can factor that and find out there's two values of y that will set this to zero. One is, I'll use eq for equilibrium, zero, and there's another equilibrium at y equal one. So we can draw this piece of the differential equation ourselves. So if this is the yt plane, and here's y, okay, at y equal one is one equilibrium solution, and remember it's a horizontal line. And y equals zero is another equilibrium solution. So even without Using a computer program, we can already put these lines in. These are lines of slope zero because these are null clines. But when you look at this, you see that it divides the, the y-axis into intervals. It can start at minus infinity and go to zero because that's the first null cline, and, between, and zero to one is the region between the two null clines, and one to in positive infinity is the region above the upper null cline. Then if you look at the slope inside each of these, these strips, all you have to do is pick out one value of y, put it in the equation, and if that slope is negative, they're all negative. If it's positive, they're all positive because that's what it means by similar flow. So between one and infinity, put two into that equation and um, just for a number. So we have two minus four is minus two. That's negative. They're all negative. Between zero and one, use a half and you find out they're positive. Between um, minus infinity and zero, try a negative one. Okay. And they're all So what we have here is we can just about sketch this, whoops, sorry, we can sketch this without even, here's your y, here's t, this is the y equals zero null cline. So here is the y equals one null cline, and we know that Above here, the slopes are all downward. Slopes are upward here, and the slopes are downward here. Now these curves are going to approach equilibrium in what's called either the for in forward time or in backward time. 
and I'll show you what that means. So here is the YT plane and this is some of the computer generated uh, direction field but if you notice I had to draw in the equilibrium lines at y equal 1 and y equals 0 the computer program just due to the step size couldn't draw them in. It showed some little lines that were almost horizontal above it but kind of sloping up and here some sloping down but it never even put that line in. So that's why it's good to be able to pick those out yourself and definitely not rely on some direction field that's computer generated. Okay, so here is say the starting point for a solution curve that's lying between y equal 1 and y equal 0. Now the slopes here are all positive so even though they look like they're almost getting horizontal, they're not. It's an asymptotic approach. So as time goes in this direction forward, time's going forward, positive time here, it's asymptotically approaching this equilibrium. When you look in the other direction, because it's between two equilibrium values, as it comes down here, it's going to be asymptotically approaching this other equilibrium. Somewhere in here there's a point of inflection. So if you have two equilibrium values here, you're going to have this, the curves between them are going to have some sort of point of inflection so that they are they're approaching one equilibrium in positive time and the other equilibrium in backward time. If you had downward slopes, the curve would, you know, you'd be approaching in this direction. This of course is not apply to this case. So this, the curve in here, like I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is it doesn't always have to go up. It could go down, but it have the same idea of approaching each equilibrium asymptotically. So here are some other solutions for that equation. These are solution curves that lie either above the y equal 1 equilibrium or below the y equals 0 equilibrium. And remember, um, okay, I can draw that in. The isocline is not shown on the software, I guess it didn't have the resolution to do it, so here is the y equal 1 isocline, here would be the y equal 0 isocline. Okay, and now in this region up here, and then that'd be um, a 0. Okay, in the region above the y equal 1 uh, null cline, or equilibrium solution. It's the same here because it's an autonomous uh, differential equation. Well, all the slopes here were negative, so they all have similar flow. They're flowing down. And here, they're also flowing down. Remember, between the two of them, they were flowing up. Okay. And the way the software does it, um, this, this is a software that came with your book that I used here. If you use the starting point here, it will show the uh, backward the progression in backward time in one color compared to the progression in forward time. So from this point forward, it's asymptotically approaching the nearest equilibrium value. Because there's no other equilibrium value above it, it's just going towards infinity if you look in backward time. And similarly here, this is the starting point for this solution. Going forward, it's just heading towards negative infinity. But if you look in backward time, appears to have been approaching in backward time to the other equilibrium value. Remember that for this equation, for this autonomous differential equation, autonomous meaning that dy by dt has no t dependence, it is just some function of y, that the isoclines are horizontal lines, the null clines are horizontal lines, but also all the isoclines are horizontal lines. And you can see that here. Uh, let's look at this slope. See the slope here? It's repeated at every value of t across here. So for your isocline, you would take some kind of a line and you connect those. See, this gives you an isocline. All along this isocline, the solution curves will cross that isocline with the same slope. It's a horizontal line. Of course, the isoclines and the tangents that are crossing them are not the same, except at the null cline in this case. Now we're going to look at the non-autonomous differential equation. 
so that means there is possible explicit or there is explicit t dependence. Things are going to change with time. Right for the autonomous case, all the isoclines, including all the null clines, were horizontal lines. That's not the case here. Also for the autonomous case, all null clines were solutions of the differential equations. So here's the autonomous case. The null clines were also solutions. That's not necessarily the case for the non-autonomous differential equations. Now why is an isocline a solution or not a solution? For the isocline to be a solution, the derivative of the equation for the isocline must be the same as the value of the isocline. I'll give you an example here. So here's a non-autonomous differential equation. You can see right here you see that t dependence. So it's a function of t and y, comma y, is y minus t. Okay, so and now for review, let's look at this equation and say, what kind of equation is it? It's first order because you only have the first derivative of y. Is it separable? No, it's not separable because remember to be separable, this is just a review from previous lectures, you had to have some function of y times some function of t. Well that's not the case here, this is here's a function of y, here's a function of t, but they're subtracted, so that doesn't count. So it's not separable. Is it linear? Yeah, it's linear. You could write dy by dt minus y equals negative t the derivative and the function are to the first order only. Is it homogeneous or non-homogeneous? It is non-homogeneous because it has what you might call a forcing function out here of minus t. That was just reviews just to kind of get those um, other categories in your mind. So now we'll go back to the problem at hand. Okay, so we want to find the isoclines. The isoclines are curves or values of y and t such that the first derivative is a constant. It can be any constant it wants, it only has to be zero on a null cline. Right. So if I set y, which is minus t equal to c, I can write an equation for it. Here's the equation for the isocline. y equals t plus c. So whatever c is, these are just um, You can see these are just um, diagonal lines, but they're translated up by C for this particular equation. All right, now take the derivative of this equation and you'll get 1 because the derivative of T plus C is just 1 because C is a constant. So the only isocline that is also a solution is the isocline with C equal to 1. Then the derivative along the isocline is the same as the derivative from the differential equation. Okay, So that was just an example of how to find which isocline or isoclines are also solution curves. And the importance of that is that these, another solution cannot cross a solution curve. It can cross an isocline as long as it's not a solution. Well, here is some the direction field and some null clines marked for this non-autonomous equation. So we have dy by dt equal to minus 2ty squared. Okay, so the isoclines are those for which this is equal to a constant. And we can write an equation for the isoclines that would be, because you're taking the square root, right? Plus or minus the square root of there's going to be a negative sign over here, c over 2t. Of course, that's going to put some restrictions on the signs of c and t, depending on the region that they're in, but we'll just leave it at that. So these are the equations. There is a null line here. If y equals 0, dy by dt equals 0. How about if t equals 0? If t equals 0, dy by dt is also zero. So there's two null clines right there and they're marked here. But notice the equation here, if t is zero, well it's not, you're not allowed to divide by zero, but that would give you an infinite slope. And you can see 
that the slope of the line here is infinite, it's vertical. So here are the two um, null lines. Now even though they aren't solution curves, whether they're solution curves or not, the null lines divide the plane into regions of, of similar flow. So in this region, it's just dividing it like it's the quadrants in the plane, all of these are positive, all these slopes here are negative, all these are positive, and these are negative. Now this is a solution curve, as well as being a null line. This is not a solution curve. Right, solutions that start here with this positive slope cannot move down to this region because they cannot cross they cannot cross this um, the null line that is also a solution, the y equals zero line. But they are able to cross this null line because it's not a solution. And how are they going to cross it? They have to cross it with zero slope because they have to cross with the same tangent um, as the null line, or the isocline, I'm sorry. In this case, null line. And they can come down here like this. All right. So you see, in some cases, you can't get from one of these um, regions to the other, and sometimes you can. But if the only way to get it is you have to cross a null line that is not a solution curve. And here are some of the solution curves. So this one is, um, sorry, okay, starting here. This one can cross this null line, this is y and this is t, and this is one null line. Okay, the null line is at t equals zero, and here's the other null line at y equals zero that happens to be a solution curve. So you see it's coming up here, you see these straight lines across here, they're just crossing right uh, with that horizontal tangent onto, into the other side. Down here, they'll do the same thing because y equals, um, or t equals zero is a null line down here too, and you can see these are um, horizontal tangents, tangents of zero. And the solution curves are coming up here, they're crossing, and then they're going back down. So this is a very different situation that we saw in the first case with the autonomous um, differential equation. So let's just review what we have here. We have um, a differential equation, and we looked at two different types. Don't worry about the one with no y dependence. So you have no t dependence, so it's autonomous. And then you have one where there, has, there is t dependence, and that's called non-autonomous. And we can draw these direction fields with the computer all we want, but we really need to pick out the null clines. An isocline is a line along which the solution curves that cross it will have the same talent, tangent. Now the ones that we pick out in particular with the null clines, so these are isoclines, they're equal to C. Okay, when C is equal to zero, it's also called a null cline. For the autonomous case, all the isoclines are horizontal lines. That includes the null clines. Also, the null clines are solutions. No other solution curve can cross that null cline. Right? And so when you put the null clines onto the plane, they're going to divide the plane up into strips, and in that strip, the, um, the solution curve will have similar flow. That means if it's going up in one spot, it's going to be up, going up throughout that region. If it's moving downward, so the slopes are negative, it'll be downward throughout that region. And that holds here for the autonomous case. For the non-autonomous case, you're also going to have null clines. The example I showed, they had, they were actually straight lines. One was horizontal and one was vertical. That isn't the case. The null clines can be curved, right, through the plane. So for the non-autonomous, um, they can be much more complicated. If it's a solution curve, then the solutions can't cross it. If it isn't a solution curve, the curves will cross it, and they will cross it um, with their tangents being horizontal. But just like in the other case, the null clines divide the plane into regions of similar flow.